Nassim, we already knew you very well as a good friend and as a comrade from Blockupy. We've interviewed you before for Black Pegasus Athens, but we also know that you yourself have a um, experience in refugee movements, and um, you also have experiences in solidarity movements. So you have three perspectives on uh, the conference. We are meeting each other here again. So my first question for you would be: um, You said very positively in the last workshop, if it happens once, it can happen again. But you, from a personal perspective, how did you experience the last year and the, also the um, developments through the last month with closed borders and so on? Uh, I think uh, last year what happens with the refugees movement uh, brought a huge change in a lot of different levels, I could say. First of all, there is created a lot of question about existing of the borders and the border regime as uh, idea. Uh, always it has been a doubt about what does it mean borders, uh, who create borders, why created borders, and what is our responsibility fighting against borders. You know? uh, the idea or the history of border is not going so far. If you see historically what does it mean, if you go to Africa, for example, you will see straight lines of borders, countries like boxes, uh, which were created with the colonists, the European colonists uh, in Africa. But if you come to the newest history of Europe, you can see the border, the idea of border is mostly connected with uh, but sometimes with the idea of control, controlling people, controlling situation, uh, profiling people, creating uh, categories of people. And if you go more realistically to see it, uh, the last year's border is uh, a mechan mechanism which creates illegal migration. People that they are trying to arrive in safe places, uh, they are facing a mechanism which uh, stops them, which profiling them, and it was not just by chance that the, the first detention centers in the border of Europe was calling the screening centers, which means that they were categorizing people, they were choosing people. Everyone knows that Europe needs. Uh, the migrants that they are in Europe, and they need more migrants coming to Europe. Uh, there are uh, many categories of jobs that are uh, based in cheap level coming from migration. Uh, you can see it in Spain, in Italy, in Greece, and different other countries. So borders. Uh, it was an idea from one side, from this perspective, and there is another side of the borders that it's uh, connecting with all this business of the borders. Who is involved in, who is the responsibility of the security of the border, who will take care of that, who can pass from all these agencies connecting with the private or international big companies. Uh, and endly you can say that the border is uh, also one thing which, uh, which is uh, finally ending up killing a lot of people. Uh, comparing with the numbers, you can confuse, people can confuse, but if you uh, see the real numbers of the people that they lose their lives, they lost their lives in the border of Europe, uh, maybe it's now 30, 35,000 people from the beginning of 2000. Uh, what happens last year with the movement of uh, uh, refugees trying to pass to arrive in Europe, uh, they collapsed a lot of ideas, a lot of uh, 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 proofs that the AU was using for the reason that they are closing the border, they collapsed. The uh, EU uh, spent uh, billions of euros to, to create this fortress Europe with different ways, with army, with technology, with Frontex, and suddenly some thousands of people, because at the beginning it was some thousands of people, they will try to pass the borders. 
and they managed to, to collapse the whole mentality that they created. So for us, what I think is that after what happens last year, there is a huge field of uh, working on that and questioning about, uh, first about the existing of the border and secondly about all this fake uh, situation around the border regime and around the border management. Uh, why all this much money spent and why it's not worked? Maybe it was just a uh, fake uh, uh, excuse for a lot of business around the borders. And secondly, does it work it? Uh, killing all this much people uh, and thirdly to ask who is protecting whom from whom. You understand that these people are coming, escaping from wars and trying to rescue, trying to save their lives and suddenly they are facing armies, they are facing NATO, uh, Frontex, uh, national armies and uh, Maybe, maybe we should ask also who is the enemy, finally. Uh, so all these uh, this, uh, things happened during the last year, 2015, when the borders opened, and all this movement of refugees managed to put the local governments to, to another position of management. If you, if you follow what was going to happen, what was happening in the Balkan roads, you could see that every, in every country the, the authorities, the only things that they could do is to manage how they can pass the people from their own country to the next one. Uh, but the fortress Europe came back in much more harsh, much more wars. They closed again the borders. Uh, they, they, they manage also some very important things that they couldn't do it before, like uh, Frontex become more independent, more powerful. They managed to connect the migration issue with what is happening in the Middle East. Middle East. They managed to send NATO in a GNC, which is not exactly, or it's not only related to controlling borders or stopping migration, it's also another more high level of policies relating with the war in the Middle East uh, because it, in, where is NATO active at the moment, uh, a big part of the places in the GNC is not passing refugees. So the question is what they are doing here, why? Uh, so for the movements, I think uh, there is a positive uh, field of uh, fighting much more and much more organized and much more in transnational level uh, to, to be open the borders for refugees coming and passing uh, and of course to, to organize ourselves also to, to demand for uh, safe routes, safe uh, passages. You know, it's, AU is the only union, uh, you can say, that uh, never officially opened the borders for refugees. When it was a war in Afghanistan, the neighbor countries, they opened the borders, they accepted almost from 3, 2 million refugees. When it started the war in Syria, even very poor countries like Jordan, Lebanon, they opened the borders, Turkey opened the borders, they accepted some millions of uh, refugees. But a very small percentage of, of all these refugees, when they try to, to pass the border of the EU, the EU uh, treated them like a, an enemy, like a threaten, and uh, mistreat them a lot uh, and uh, did a lot of illegal things. Uh, for example, the pushbacks that they were taking place before the last summer of opening the borders and uh, now that it's taking place with uh, direct uh, involvement of uh, Frontex, 
it's one of the worst way to stop migration because when you are pushing back refugees, you only you you, you do not only uh, don't respect their rights as refugees that they have the right to arrive and to apply for asylum and to pass through legal process. You also put their life in danger because in the middle of the sea you cannot do it in another way. It's the only way that you can do it to to push them back. Push back means this pushing people back and there, there is a lot of accidents happens. Uh, and what's happening also in the Mediterranean Sea is also a big proof of that. From the moment that they closed, we had another two, three big tragedies with hundreds of people that they lose their uh, borders. Uh, so I think if happens at last year, if the borders uh, opens, it can be open again. And to open it, we need to, to, to fight against the border regime with refugees uh, uh, based on their needs and their will. Since we are now in Germany and you've been following also the movements here since a while, we feel a certain responsibility also for the role of the German government and the reconstitution of the EU and so on. So people ask themselves, what can we do here? What can we do more than the daily solidarity practices? What would you say from an internationalist perspective? I think uh, AU created a lot of mechanism of, uh, you know, a, a, the idea of AU is based in, uh, in creating coalition of some countries for the benefit of very few countries. Just in general, to have an idea of EU, it was not a union of equal rights, equal responsibility of the members of EU. You cannot see it only this uh, related to migration, also the crisis with how the things work in the EU. Uh, all it is a project, EU is a failed project, I think, maybe I'm not mistaken. But with, re with migration, AU is uh, created uh, from a long time a lot of mechanism to, to be some countries to be protected from the migration, from the refugees to arrive there. Uh, the first mechanism it was the Schengen Convention, and secondly, it was much more clear during the Dublin II Convention. The Dublin II was based. In, in an idea that when people were arriving in the external, they were passing the external border of EU, the first countries, they are responsible of the refugees that they are receiving, that they are arriving. So they, the refugees didn't have the right to move from the first country to the other countries. What, what does it mean? It means that people arriving in Greece, for example, or in Italy, some years before in Spain, uh, they, they had to stay there, and if they were trying to go to to, to the Western or the Central Europe, they were returning back to, to these countries. But imagine that from 2000, the, the situation changed, uh, and Greece became as a, a main entrance of refugees uh, to Europe. Practically, it was impossible to keep all the people in Greece. Another thing happens that uh, in how we made, made uh, the Dublin II as a convention, as an agreement, uh, not working well. That was related with the situation in Greece, that was related with the Golden Dawn and the corruption of the police, mistreatment of refugees. So many countries decided to not send back refugees back to Greece. But still as idea, it was clear that some countries pushed some other countries to sign an agreement. It was not fair. Uh, what is happening now is that the AU tried to make this agreement with Turkey. Uh, they signed an agreement which is, uh, AU knows, Turkey knows that it's not the 100% sure agreement because the demands from two sides is not uh, fixing to each other. 
So AU is trying to uh, trying to to control as much as possible to come less people to Europe. They know that they cannot do it 100%. So AU is planning also a plan B to control the migration, and this plan B is based in using a third country, a member of AU as a third country. They, they do it at the moment with the Greece, and, uh, and of course, it goes like a China arriving to other countries, and only like this you can understand uh, the question of internal borders of Europe. A lot of fans, they are also in the, in the, inside Europe. What is happening is that uh, we, we should start fighting against all this unequal situation. Or, uh, in Greece, we, in, in, point, in one point, we were speaking about sharing responsibilities. Uh, but we didn't meant it exactly, or the movement didn't meant it exactly, how the EU meant uh, sharing responsibility when after the last summer they closed the borders and they had to stop to their opinion to, to stop the migration they created a fake uh, uh, mechanism or a fake uh, system of uh, taking responsibility and that was this relocation system uh, the relocation system it was just a vitrine of uh, anti-immigration policy of uh, Europe because they never meant it to, to to take some people that they are really refugees to share it with other countries. Uh, from the last time that they took the decision of relocation, it's only some hundreds of people that they moved from Greece to, to the rest of Europe. Uh, and especially at the times that it was the daily arrivals, it was around three, four thousand people. Uh, and the, the week weekly or the monthly people that they were sending, it was 10, 20 people uh, to different countries. I think we need to, to, to organize ourselves in more uh, global level, uh, to more inter internationally way, uh, to, to, to press mostly in, in places that the decisions take place. I mean, we are praising a lot in Greece, the Greek government. Uh, but the Greek government is doing two, two different things. One, a big part of the anti-migration policies or practices that they do, they do under a huge pressure of Europe. They press Greece to stop the migration. Uh, before closing the uh, Balkan routes, the border with Macedonia, it was a huge discussion of uh, kicking out Greece from the uh, Schengen uh, area, which was a threat against Greece to, to press to stop the migration. There is another category of things that the government is doing which is not related with Europe, but it's mostly because it's a uh, serious government. So our, uh, I think our uh, responsibility or our job is to press every government uh, and especially governments that they have more responsibility uh, to the situation like German government or the unions uh, authorities in Brussels to, to stop all these immigration policies and uh, from other side to organize ourselves with, uh, with refugees together to, to fight for more social, political, and equal rights in every place that they are arriving. Uh, clear answer, no one can give it, because the situation is changing very fast. Uh, it's not sure that uh, the last summer that we experienced is not happening again. It's not sure that, uh, uh, that uh, the political plenary of the EU will work 100%. So what, what is sure is that we need to be more organized, we need to be more uh, in contact, in, in, in organizing 
together in a more uh, uh, European level to be ready for any new changes that will come. Uh, migration 